National Lampoon presents A Quest for the Meaning of Life. Sam. Oh, Dave, you look so good. And Dave. Listen, man, you gotta surf the edges if you wanna win in life. Are having an identity crisis. Playing a circus? Yeah, yeah. You know what your problem is? The problem is that you're tied too much to material. Look, this chick is not real, okay? Of course she's not real. None of my chicks are real. They're stuck. Don't be evicted. <laughs> They're out of business. We quit. We quit. Quit? How about fire? No problem. My Uncle Rex wants us to come to his place, which is Treasure Island. They're on their way to another dimension. Uh oh! Ta-da! A killer vacation. We're gonna have uh, great fun, big, fat fun. On Uncle Rex's Treasure Island. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They mentioned that I don't wear any underwear. A world of paradise, complete with the hottest babes. The meanest villain. Come on down, this one here is the one they call Sam. Ooh, he's cute. And this is the other one, boss. I want you to get rid of them. Oh, God. Everybody says there's a treasure, but no one knows for sure. We have walked by this place every day for the last week, and I have not once noticed a sign. They can save paradise. Three million dollars! From being lost forever. <laughs> Vidmark presents Corey Feldman. Oh, that was nice. Corey Hayes. Let's <laughs> do this. We gotta look for this treasure because if we don't look for the treasure, he's gonna make us walk the plank. Walk the plank? Oh, Sam, man, that's movie stuff. Dave, this is a movie. In National Lampoon's Last Resort. National Lampoon's Last Resort is a 1994 comedy film directed by Rafal Zelinsky of the Screwballs franchise, and it stars the legendary two Corys in what's widely considered to be their worst outing. <clears throat> and wow, what a supporting cast here. We get Jeffrey Lewis, uh, we get the babysitter from Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, the mighty Tony Longo. 90s comedy icon Eric Sparky Edwards, and more. Sam and Dave are living the boring life until they're beckoned to Sam's uncle's island. When they get there, they are compelled by beautiful women and a dastardly enemy of the island. After accidentally convincing Sam's uncle to sign away the rights to his island, they must somehow fix the problem, which is a very loose <laughs> description of this film. Oh my god. This would be around the time that National Lampoon first started to dip its feet in the mud. The name still had some clout, and it's crazy to think that some of these actors must have been stoked to be in a National Lampoon movie, only to show up on set and see what they're dealing with. In fact, Feldman himself stated that in his book that he showed up thinking it was going to be a bigger deal than it was, damn. Both of the boys would still be dealing with issues here, as Haim was in and out of rehab years prior, and during this time was in full relapse mode. Although, to be honest, it's not that obvious. As for Feldog, well, he would have just gotten out of his stint in rehab after the events that took place during the filming of Rock and Roll High School Forever. Learn all about that one in my documentary, link in description. And upon leaving rehab, Feldman tried to come back with some comedy films, like Meatballs 4, which, you know, started out as an original summer camp movie. Um, and uh, Feldman would also appear in another National Lampoon property before this, a much more successful one, and maybe that movie, um, it being National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1, maybe that movie influenced him to take part in this, or maybe it was just a cash flow situation, as he also did a movie called Lipstick Camera around this time that is unwatchable. And, um, let's see, after this, well, he was basically an extra in Maverick, you guys remember that? Um, you know, all thanks to his homeboy, Richard Donner, of course. While the budget for the film is obviously nearly non-existent, they lean into it in the best ways. Like, look at these trees here. That's pretty cool. And this underwater scene. Uh, <laughs> this, this, is, this, this movie's awesome. I love it. And hey, need a transition from the city to Oceanside on a budget? Well, here you go. <laughs> There was even a tie-in contest that was kind of weird. Um, if you if you played the game right, you're gonna win the ultimate vacation, or some rollerblades. 
people. We're offering a chance. Twelve vacation trips in all. Not for one, but for two. We'll fly you free. To St. Croix. It's six days and five nights at the beautiful Hibiscus Beach Hotel. You thought we were just standing here being stupid. Hamster comes with all of his charm in tow as usual, but they kind of make him the bumbling idiot in this one. Even though he seems like, um, like a genius at times, but I, I don't know, man. This movie really makes no sense. And it's quite the chore to sit through at times, um, you know, whenever nothing wacky is happening. But I do really like this movie. All the jokes are just so stupid, you can't help but laugh. There are a lot of great scenes in this movie, a lot. Picking my favorite was hard to choose, but let me show you my favorite one. Look, the higher the level, oh God, here we go. the more green and the more luxury. Why do you have to do that? It's the way it works. With the virtual reality stuff. God, come back down to Earth. Who <laughs> Cool. A turtle. What are you doing? Where did you go? A what frog. A squirrel. What's wrong with you? Yeah, a, a Buick. A Buick. Oh my God, it's a Buick. Uh... Sam Carver? Yes, you can call me that. A snail. Oh, I'm glad I found you. I was waiting at the airport. How'd you get here? Oh, we jumped through the sky. Two dogs doing it. The film would be blasted by critics, well, the ones that bothered, and, you know, it would go down in infamy as one of the worst from the two Corys, as well as being among the worst from National Lampoon. Both claims that are just wrong. And, you know, it makes for a good time if you're looking for a cheap laugh, and it's done just tongue-in-cheek enough to have a lasting impression. I was able to chat with 90s icon Eric Sparky Edwards about his time working on the film. Let's check that out. So I remember I did a movie around the same time with the two Corys. Um, not, at, not at their peak. I was between um, representation and my buddy Dave Garrett, I think he's one of the writers on the film, or one of the producers, uh, asked, he goes, dude, you want to do this movie? Uh, to National Lamp because he'd help, he was what became one of the uh, forces behind National Lampoon. So I, you know, I was like, sure, yeah, dude, fucking works, work. You know, it paid, and, you know, Dave Garrett's my boy, and, you know, um, you know, I was like, let's do it. So, and then, you know, the cool thing about, about Last Resort, I got to work with Jeffrey fucking Lewis, man, and then Tom, uh, Tony Longo, who, uh, he's a, God rest his soul, he passed away about five years ago, or about four years ago. And I had first met Tony Longo in like 1989 or 1990 when I was a PA, a production assistant on Young Riders uh, in Tucson, Arizona. And he had done a, he did a guest, you know, a guest star on that. And then I got to see him and work with him in this movie. And that was kind of a cool thing. You know what I'm saying? So like, I look back and I go, man, you know what? You can, um, you can, it's fucking, you're working. You know what I'm saying? Although I want I want to say this. There was a time whenever I saw Last Resort in a video, I would buy it. <laughs> I didn't want Edward to ever see it. <laughs> but once again, well, once again, like I said, it wasn't made for me. And you know, but I have good memories from making the movie. Does that make sense? And then I want to say Hames was not doing too well. Uh, but I, I felt really bad for. I mean, I know Corey, from what I gathered, it meant a lot to him, and he was trying to do the best, and he was under the guise that it was supposed to get a theatrical release, which I kind of knew from reading it, and also because I knew Dave that it was, it, they had a video deal, it wasn't when the National, and that's at the point, which was very sad, because I have three or four National Lampoon movies on my credit, but they're not like, they're not like Animal House, they were just where whoever owned it was literally just licensing out the name, and not really, you know, not giving it the old college pride. Does that make sense? You know, and, and like I said, what, he's just a good dude. You know, like I said, he's somebody, he's one of those guys that I I hope in his, like, well, like me, I hope he gets uh, more opportunities as he ages into more of being a man, like an older man. Because he is a, he's a fucking good actor. He really is. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is that there, I, my, I almost have a warm spot in my heart for those young, those two guys because before they cracked 19, 18 years old, they were, well, yeah, one definitely is a work because he, God rest his soul, 
passed away. And if that's a that's a shame. You know, we get cock blocking on that movie. Um, but uh, they had you know, like um, Corey Feldman. I hope you know, like he's one of those guys that I hope has a big comeback. Like a really, like a really, because at one time, you look at his work as a young kid, he was so fucking good. Just so fucking good. And then you hear his story, and like, I still think uh, there's a very famous woman that needs to apologize to him. I did get, I did get the vibe from him that he, uh, I know he was trying, he was trying to do his best. Well, yeah, and then also I think he's kind of shed that Michael Jackson kind of thing he was doing. You know, he had the, the I want to say even in that, that, he had the jacket and the hat and that thing kind of going on. And um, look, like I said, that dude, God bless him because he was in Stand By Me, you know, Lost Boys, uh, The Burbs. I mean, that, I mean, just just what he did. I mean, in, um, not Luke, because that was Corey Hames. Uh but uh, license to drive. I mean, that he did some fucking amazing shit. And just for the simple fact that, uh, you know what, he's alive. You know what I'm saying? God bless him. And I hope he gets. Like I said, I, I, you know, I, I hope he gets a shot. You know. Thanks for joining me in episode 19 of Staunch on Film. Be sure to catch up with the rest of them. We'll be reaching number 20 next year. Woo! And Happy New Year's to you all. I really appreciate you subscribing. And I want to hear from everybody that did. Please uh, say what's up in the comments. Let me know what you want to see from Staunch TV in 2021. I promise no more Corey content for a while. <laughs> uh, see you next month, guys. Be safe. And until next time. Two dogs doing it. Don't forget to rewind.